time for another stock review. This time, charge point, as requested by one of our members. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into charge point. We're going to show you the balance sheet. We're going to show you the uh, the um, back test against the SNP. We're going to look at the at the latest news. We're going to look at the website. We're also going to take a deep dive into the financials. We're going to see who's buying the stock, who's selling the stock, what the balance sheet is, the debt position. I'm going to give you a profitability score. I'm going to give you a solvency score. Uh, we're going to look at the sentiment, a sentiment score and everything. Uh, my reviews are always make it every single, every single review of every single stock onto Alpha Spread, the most advanced algorithmic software in the world. It's done on numbers. We can analyze a stock purely on numbers, not people's emotions and uh, inflating the value of the stock or they're, they're sponsored by someone to say something's great. I use this to make my informed decisions. And this is why my portfolio is up, breaking all-time records. I'm beating Warren Buffett consistently. I'm beating the S&P consistently. I've gone from 5000 to sixty, just about $67,000 live on the show without ever shorting a stock or whatever. So uh, it happens live here on the show. I'm now going to do it for you. All members can request uh, a, 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 full, a full review. And uh, if you are new here for the very first time, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell and thumbs up the video. If you share the video out, it makes a huge difference and uh, we learn about new stocks. It's completely unbiased. Um, it's completely fair, open. No one pays me or sponsors me to do this. Uh, however, um, Alpha Spread love my re reviews and every single one of them makes it onto their website. Uh, others like uh, Bloomberg and Yahoo and Mad Money and Jim Cramer are cherry picked. Mine all go on there, every single one. Let's go into a review. Uh, we're going to start basic and then we're, we're going to get deep dive into it. So I don't apologize for the sim simplicity at the beginning, uh, but as we go through, it will become more in depth as we go. That's the way I like to do it because investing shouldn't be complicated. If the numbers make sense, you find a way to invest. At the end of the day, you're looking for a company that is uh, great potential, undervalued, has a good balance sheet, and proprietary and unique. And that's why you invest in it. I don't invest in the stock. I invest in the company. Let's go straight into it. Here we go. All right. Charge point. Let's assume that nobody knows what it is. I'm going to show you the overall line chart first of all, the very, very simple line chart. We all know uh, it looks like a SPAC. I don't know, but it looks like a SPAC around the $10. And then it popped all the way up on the IPO and then it all fell away. Uh, in fact, it IPO'd here. I beg your pardon. Yeah, it's IPO'd here at the SPAC price and it didn't move for ages. And then it popped up and then off we went. Anyway, what is charge point? It sounds obvious, but not everybody might know. Charge Point operates as an electric vehicle charging network provider. Straight away, I'd want to know straight away, the leader is Tesla with its charging facilities. Have they got a relationship or something with Tesla? I would like to know that. And that's the first thing I'd be looking into before I bought stock in this. Uh, it designs, develops and markets networked electric vehicle charging system infrastructure and its cloud services enable consumers the ability to locate, reserve and authenticate and transact electric electric vehicle charging. Okay. Um, the firm provides an open platform providing real-time information about charging sessions and control, support and management of the uh, network charging systems. The network uh, provides multi-web-based portals for charging system owners, fleet managers, drivers, and utilities. Okay. Founded in 2007, uh, in, uh, based in California, 1,650 employees, CEO Richard Wilmer. Another thing I like to do, and it's why we're streaming today on, on uh, LinkedIn, I invite the CEO and the CFO and others of the company to uh, phone into my show. I've always got an open phone line. You can be live on the show. I'd love to hear from you. Um, before I invest in, in a stock, I'd like to get to know who the CEO is. Uh, are they doing a good job? Where do they come from? What's their, what's their history? I'm buying the company, remember, not the stock price. I want to know that my company is being well managed and is going to do well in the future. 
Okay, initial requirement, 100% on margin. Now, what does this mean? If you are buying the stock with margin, you're borrowing the money from the brokerage, it's regarded at the highest level of risk. 100% is the highest, 25% is the least for something like the SNP. So it's regarded as high risk, which means if you buy it on margin, you're more likely more likely potentially going to get a margin call because they think it's a much more risky stock. Doesn't mean you are going to get a margin call, but it is. Uh, you have to have uh, more money to cover um, the, uh, the the loan, if you like. They're not uh, they're not making it easy for you. All right, that's basically what it means. It doesn't not, nothing to be scared of, but it does tell you it's a volatile stock if uh, you use margin. In, even if you don't, for that matter. Average volume, 20.9 million today. It's average volume at the end of the day. It's quarter past three in the afternoon. The bell's just gone. So it's about average today, not huge amounts of volume. We like stocks with volume. It presents opportunity because if you want to sell a stock and there's no volume, there's no one buying, the stock can drop and drop and drop and you still can't get out. Uh, if there's a lot of action, a lot of vo volatility, a lot of liquidity, uh, then you can get in and out of the stock uh, at the price you are at, at, at the time. Uh, whereas if there's no volume and it's very low, you might have to, you know, put a, a, you know, wait around for the stock to, to drop even further before anyone is willing to buy it. Remember, every time you sell a stock, it's because somebody else is prepared to pay something for it. If no one's prepared to pay what you're trying to sell it for, it won't sell. And if there's no volatility, sorry, there's no, there's no volume and liquidity, you can go, well, I want to sell my stock, but no one's buying it. So you have to lower the price. That's how it works. No dividend yield, of course. It's a growth stock. Um, low today is 199. The 52 week low is 179. Price to earnings ratio, the company's losing money. It more than likely would be a new company like this. It's got a capital expenditure. It's losing money. Um, that doesn't mean to say it's a bad thing. It just means it's investing in its infrastructure. It's not making much profit. We don't know if it's going to be a good business yet. It's not a good business until it makes any money at the end of the day. Uh, uh, however, the price earnings ratio is negative 1.89. What you need to do is compare that to other charging infrastructures. I will give you the competition in a minute. You can go and have a little look at it and you can compare it and uh, you can decide whether it's um, you know a good value, pr the price you're paying to the earnings of the, uh, ratio, what you're going to earn for the stock. It's a small company, relatively, 738.1 million market cap. Remember, the market cap isn't the value of the stock. It's purely how much the, the shares outstanding are worth, what people are prepared to pay for the stock. In other words, a can of Coke is worth a dollar, right? You can find it every day for a dollar. Wherever you go, a can of Coke is a dollar. Everybody could want to buy that one can of Coke today and, and be prepared to pay $10 a can of Coke. Now my can of Coke is worth $10 because everybody's prepared to pay $10. Doesn't mean the can of Coke is worth $10. And tomorrow there's a new batch of Coke arriving and, the, and it's going to be flooded on the market. And now everybody wants to pay $1 again. So I'm stuck holding the bag. This is purely the value of the shares outstanding. It's not the value of the company. Not we're going to come. We're going to come on to that later in the video. All right. Okay. Let's move on down. And um, uh, Morningstar. I don't use Morningstar. I don't like it. Uh, it's very heavily influenced. Uh, I don't use this. I've got much better ways of valuing the stock in a moment. But uh, we'll come on to that in a second. They say it's a buy of thirty-seven percent and a hold of fifty-eight percent. Only four percent of the analysts of 24 ratings are suggesting a sell. Excuse me. The bulls, well, of course, the bulls is the, the optimistic uh, investors. They believe the stock is going to go up. Uh, the charge point provides investors leveraged leverage to the expected uh, long-term growth of ED, uh, EV adoption. The bull, the bears, uh, they're negative on the stock, are saying Charge Point's business is expected to remain largely hardware orientated over time. Okay, this was done on November the 17th, so it's relatively up to date. Uh, we're not going to go into any more detail on that because I have much more detailed analysis coming up. Uh, 
Okay, uh, as you can see here, the, the, they they say that fair value is two fifty. We will do our own research in a minute and run it through much more sophisticated, unbiased software. They're saying it's worth two fifty. So right now they're suggesting uh, that it's uh, it, that it's undervalued because today's price is two dollars. As I speak to you now, it is. So they're saying it's undervalued. Economic moat, none. The economic moat is to do with the margins. We'll come on to the margins in a minute. If the if the company has a big margin, uh, big profits, and, and uh, uh, they can, percentage-wise, that is, not amount of, but percentage-wise, a margin on when they're selling something, for their services or goods, goods or services, if they've got a wide margin or a, a decent margin, they can sell less, and still do well, which is exactly why Enphase Energy is doing so well. It can, it doesn't, it can afford not to cut prices. They've got a nice wide margin. The economic moat here is none, none whatsoever. Again, simplistic terms, but we'll look at it in, in more detail in a moment. Extreme ex, uh, uh, uncertainty, extreme. Well, it's uncertainty. It sounds very dramatic, and it, it's intended to be, but uh, it's a new company not making any money, so of course, uh, uncertainty is extreme. It's not building up cash or it's not a profitable business right right now. Stewardship, they would say, is uh, standard. You can't really do much with a new company. It hasn't proved itself yet. Earnings is going sideways. Uh, it's beating expectations 50% uh, of the time and then it's missing expectations. But remember, the analysts at Wall Street set the expectations. They're rubbish at it rubbish at it. They cannot uh, estimate at all. Uh, for, for Toffee, in fact, uh, people who work at Wall Street are, are, are traders. They're not investors. They're looking at today's price, what we know, because they just want to look at the numbers today and go, okay, what do we know? What are we doing? We're in and out in 10 seconds, okay? Whereas somebody with a, with a much more open mind is seeing where the company is going and not on about gambling and just guessing, but uh, they like to just see what's right in front of them. They can't, they can't look down the road. So the analysts estimate um, where they think the stock's going on earnings. Um, it's based upon what they did last time. It's like chart readers uh, predict the future by saying where it went last time. That isn't enough for me to want to invest a stock just looking at where it was last time, to be quite honest. That's pretty lame, in my opinion. It's just guessing. But there you go. Um, it's, it plays an important part. However, it's not enough. You need to do more research than just that. Um, and uh, it missed massively on the last earnings, and we'll wait to see what it does on the next. Hence, the price is down. Let's see who buys this stock. Whoever buys this stock, it will tell you of the, uh, the volatility of the stock. What we don't want to see is what we're looking at, Lucid. We don't want to see Mullen. We don't want to see Neo. Why do I say that? Because that type of investor is very aggressive. Uh, that kind of investor is very manipulative. I speak to the Lucid and the Neo and the Mullen gamblers. I don't call them investors at all because they make up stories. They try to manipulate me, offering me all sorts of money to say all sorts of rubbish, which I won't do. So uh, because of that, I won't touch their stock. The Lucid car is fantastic, probably the best EV in the world, but it's being run by a bank robber, uh, Peter Rawlinson, who takes half a uh, billion dollars in wages when the company lose half a million dollars every time they sell a car. I don't know how he gets away with it, but he does. But that's the sort of person that buys this stock, which means it's going to be pumped, dumped. It means it's going to be shorted. It's uh, all sorts of problems, which you might not like. If there was J&J, &J, Coca-Cola in here, I'd go, oh, okay, the right sort of people are buying it. They're not. I don't know anything about Evgo. I haven't done a review on Blink Charging. Oh, yes, I have. Beg your pardon. I have done a review. I just don't remember what my review said. It was a few weeks ago. Don't like this. I don't like this. Plug power. Plug I invest in plug. I want to be absolutely clear, though, that I do invest in plug. Uh, and I've said time and time again, I bought it, uh, but I've not continued to buy it. Uh, I, even though I'm down again at the moment, I could buy it again. I've got the funds to do it. I'm not because it is a potential forex. However, it is risky. People don't like the CEO. Uh, it's very volatile. Plug fires up, plug fires down. The stock does get a lot of uh, lot of negativity around it. Um, so again, it doesn't matter how good the company is. 
unlike Mullen, which is a load of, ju- load of rubbish, it's built to be rubbish. Um, Dave Mitchery has done it on countless occasions to many companies. It's a load of rubbish. Uh, Plug is is a good business. It's just got a lot of debt recently. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the fact that uh, we had the hydrogen shortages. But to, that's been resolved. The stock was driven down. Um, again, Wall Street don't they don't look at what's coming. They look at where they are right now. So plug's okay, but it is volatile. Uh, but anyway, just to give you an indication of what's in the stock. Okay, now before we go into the numbers, because we're going to go into the numbers in a few moments in great detail to, to, to establish whether we should buy the stock or not, we're going to uh, look a bit more on their website. I like their website because it gives me an indication of, uh, of the the flavor of how well the company is put together and what it's doing. Let's get a more of an, understa- a, a, a more of an understanding about what the company is. This is their website. Comprehensive charging for home, uh, hospitality, and uh, multifamily. Let's have a little look. Uh, hundreds of thousands of places to charge. One account to access them in North America and Europe. Let me make that a bit bigger so you can see there. We're leading the charge. Actually, we started it. You'd think after creating the world's largest and most open EV charging network, we'd be satisfied. But you'd be wrong. The way we see it, there is still much more we can do together. Join us in getting all people and goods moving on electricity. I would like to do some extra research here. And if anyone from the company is watching, and they do, this is why I got invited onto LinkedIn today. Um... I'd like you to reach out, respond to to my review. I'd like to interview on the show. Um, I'd like to discuss with you, give the opportunity to promote your promote your business. I'm here to help promote, but I'm mostly uh, mostly I'm here to bring the news, the the facts to my viewers. And if it's a good company, we want to know about it. If it's rubbish, we also want to know about it. Okay, we do it all. We make offering EV charging easy for any business. Sure, we provide full stack solutions of hardware, software, services, and support, but that's not all. Fuel your business by plugging into powerful charging software and cloud platform with your existing stations of the charging uh, hardware of your choice. Qualified retailers can even take advantage of the EV's revolution without the upfront cost by becoming a site host. When everything works together, EV charging is better for everyone. Okay. I'm going to go on to the uh, balance, uh, the numbers in a minute. But one final thing, this was just done a couple of days ago. So it's latest news. Why charge point stock tumbled 27% in November? Yeah, I'd like to know that as well. Char- key points. Charge point said third quarter revenue would be much lower than expected. That's kind of typical of the EV and the solar business right now. Uh, downturn because of the uh, interest rates. All that is coming to an end. So I've got no issue with buying uh, uh, EVs or or, N- or solar because of that, because I know that's going to improve. So, okay. Uh, it also replaced its CEO and, and its CFO has left the company. Never good when the chief executive officer and chief financial officer leave. We've covered all the earnings for all the stocks we are invested in um, because it presents uh, an unknown. The markets are very much about um, stability and what they know. And we don't know what a new CEO might do or a new new CFO. Okay. Uh, The company was already struggling and deteriorating macro conditions and competition from Tesla's NACS. Okay, now that's what I said straight off the bat before I looked at that. Um, Tesla has got such dominance in the charging market. I would like to find out, and I don't know exactly how that relates to, to, uh, to ChargePoint. I would like to know that so I can reach out to Tesla and ChargePoint to perhaps comment on that and add that to uh, to my review. Maybe I can do a follow-up. Anyway, um, let's just read some of this news before we go into the numbers and then the back test. Shares of the EV charging specialist dove on, uh, dove on a guidance cut. Okay, they've cut guidance. That always sends the stock down. 
shares of electric vehicle EV charging network operator ChargePoint took a dive last month after the company reported disappointing third quarter preliminary results, ne- named a new CEO and said it is CFO, that its CFO was stepping down. The news added to the perception that ChargePoint is, a, is in disarray, as a number of car makers have developed North America's ch- American charging standard, NACS, this year, f- uh, focusing the company to adapt its chargers. As a result of the preliminary update and executive changes, the stock finished the month down 27%, according to data from S&P Global Market Intelligence. Now, remember, very important point to know this, if you've ever studied Tesla and you've ever studied the earnings, I've never sort of really talked about this before, this particular fact, but the the size of Tesla's charging business, just charging business, not EVs, not robo-taxis, not solar, not dojo, not um, Optimus, none of that, just their charging network would make it onto the Fortune 500. So just understand the scale and the size of Tesla's charging infrastructure. It would be a successful, large, successful business all by itself without all the other things. So again, it's a huge dominant force. I don't know how it, you know, we, we just mentioned a little briefly there in that note, but I don't know how it's, uh, how um, anyone else can compete, if I'm honest, with um with uh, with uh, Tesla's charging, um, I'm not going to go into any more of this. Uh, there is more information here, but I do want to go on to the news. Otherwise, this will be a too long. Uh, sorry, the numbers. This will be a, a, this will this review will be too long. So again, you, I've, you've got all the links here. Uh, this was. Um, I will leave the links below in the description of the video, and you can p- pick up more of this. Let's go over now to. Um, the most important part, the numbers. The numbers tell you everything. End of the day, as you know, I'm not passionate or emotional about stock. I'm passionate and emotional about my audience. I care about my audience knowing that I bring you the most honest, real information. That is what's important to me, not uh, the, n- nothing else. So let's look at the numbers. Numbers will tell us everything we need to know. Okay. Intrinsic value. And I will give you a warning if there is one, um, because just because something is undervalued or overvalued doesn't mean it is a buy or a sell based upon that alone. There's much more you need to do. At a best case scenario, and we're not in a best case scenario right now, interest rates are high, macro conditions are not good. It's, uh, it's undervalued by 58%. Okay. So it's undervalued, 58% in a best case scenario. We're, 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 we're more in a base case scenario, though, however. Undervalue by 24%. That's good. On paper so far, looking at the unbiased numbers, running the balance sheet, the profit, the loss, the debt, we are running at um, uh, at an undervaluation of, of, of where the price is today. Okay, Good. Good. For a growth stock like this, I'm, I'm prepared to pay 25% over valuation if it's a great company and people are overbuying it like Tesla because the stock will grow into the price potentially. But this is better than that. This is undervalued. What about the worst case scenario? Well, worst case scenario, uh, it's actually uh, it's uh, overvalued by 100%. It's not worth anything at all. In fact, it's, uh, it's the very opposite. It's negative $2. It's actually uh, going bust, in other words. Uh, now, I don't know. We haven't looked at the balance sheet yet, but that wouldn't be good at all, would it? Anyway, let's have a little look. There's no warnings here, so it doesn't look to appear to have a valuation trap. Sometimes it can appear on the base case to be undervalued. And in fact, when we look at it, it's not actually that good. It doesn't have a warning. So we're okay. So far, we're okay. All right. Okay. Um, Let's look at this. Now, we've got a new service here on our uh, system. Remember, this is the most advanced algorithmic software available. This will pick up what is said on the earnings and and condense it to a report that we can use, and it brings it up here, some of the key facts. 
Charge points are a 77% year-on-year revenue growth in Europe, contributing um, contributing 21% of its total revenue, while North America accounted for 79%, despite a non-gap gross margin of only 3% in Q2 due to a 28 million impairment. The company remained optimistic about demand. Uh, Q3 revenue was expected to rise to 150 to 165 million, a 26% increase year on year. Annual revenue guidance is set at 605 to 630 million, making a 32% growth. The company plans uh, gross margin recovery to 22 to 25% in Q3 and aims to reduce operating uh, operating expenses to 79 to 84 million uh, in the um, in the in the following quarters. Okay. Looking at the financials, the revenue is going up. Uh, the most recent figure, we can give it here, June 30th, 23. Um, we have 559 million. Things were moving up. Then we've got things uh, estimated to continue to grow. The last um, earnings was up 8%. The revenue is up 559 million, which is an 8% increase on the previous range. 336 million operating expenditure. They've been spending money. They now seem to be spending less. So that's looking favorable. Net income. Net income um, is expected to improve. Uh, 367.9 million is the net income negative. Operating cash flow. Running out of money, operating cash flow has been going down and getting uh, getting worse. Capital expenditure, uh, it looks like now they're trimming off, starting to spend uh, a bit less. Okay, anyway, let's look at the balance sheet. Now, what we don't want to see is, uh, is uh, more liabilities than assets. We certainly don't want to see um, too much long-term debt. Um, but again, we've said before, we've got long-term debt and they can manage it with the rates expected to come down. That can be a catalyst to, to, to propel the stock if it's down because of excessive debt. They might be able to, if they've got good margins, to be able to reduce the debt. One billion is its assets. Nearly 80% is liabilities. Uh, that's, a, that's, about as, that's about as worse you want to be. Any worse than that, then we're in trouble. That's whatever. But long-term debt is uh, nearly a th like nearly a third of that, three six over a third of that. Long-term debt is two hundred ninety-six million out of seven hundred ninety-three. Now, having liabilities is fine if it's if it's accounts payable, accrued liabilities, whatever capital expenditure, expenditure, whatever reinvesting. But if it's if it's debt then, you know, we're at a historic high right now. Debt is expensive. Uh, how, you know, how long has it been long-term debt? That's not good. And in fact, we've got 37% long-term debt. So that's not, that's not particularly good. It's got a, 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 a large amount of debt compared to its assets. So the balance sheet isn't too great. We've seen a lot worse, but uh, it's not, not too great. Efficiency of the company. Now, the efficiency of the company is very, very important because the efficiency gives us the moat, gives us the margin. They can sell less because they sell for high. In other words, which is why I like end phase energy, for example, in solar. Um, it's got a much better uh, margin than uh, take solar, solar edge, for example. So it can sell less, doesn't need to reduce prices. It can crush the competition. So it has a wide moat. Uh, the margin was 18 or 22 percent, and it has been coming down. That's not what we want to see. We want to see the company improving on margins, operating margin, operating margin as uh, has improved uh, slightly. Net margin has improved as well from negative 74. Now, sorry, I beg your pardon. Negative 187. Oh, beg your pardon. I'm off the screen. Negative 187. Uh, now moving up to negative 74. So that's improving. 
Um, okay. Let's look at the fundamental scores. Obviously, no no doubt about that. Uh, no surprise here that the profitability of this company isn't that great. Now, it doesn't matter. A company can set up and not be profitable. When I set up my show for a year and a half, I'm sitting here working, earning no, no, no money. So my profit my profitability score would have been zero, making no money at all. Um, however, uh, their ex 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 exceptional revenue growth forecast is good. Their return on equity is increasing. Their ROIC is increasing and exceptional one-year growth. All that's good. We've seen a lot worse. It's a new company, but 29 uh, isn't, isn't, isn't too healthy right now. However, what is important is the solvency score. Solvency will tell us if the company is likely to go bust. Well, 37 out of 100. It's amber. It's not red. It's not green. It's, we've seen worse. We've seen a lot better. Positive net debt. That's what I said. Too much debt. Too much debt. Uh, the balance sheet was very weighted in, in debt. I don't like buying companies with a lot of debt. However, it's no okay to borrow money but they're not funded very well, which means they're going to want to dilute potentially. And the stock is $2. It's already, it's already, uh, you know, extremely low. Uh, it's a penny stock. Anything under $5 is a penny stock. Uh, if it goes under a dollar, it's going to have to reverse split to stay on the exchange. Um, and it might need to do a, uh, a raise uh, and dilute the stock to, 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 to get capital to continue operations. Um, 37 isn't the end of the world, but how can it manage its earnings over the next quarter, its debt over the next quarter or two, uh, remains to be seen. So, Wall Street. Let's, let's have a look. Wall Street aren't very good at, uh, at valuing this type of company at all. Uh, I think they're going to be all over the place. They're saying a 744% upside. That sounds a bit excessive to me, but um, it depends on if we've got a short squeeze imminent. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Uh, and inside trading. Uh, that sounds very high to me. At the average, uh, it's a 198 uh, 198% upside, worst case scenario, 4% downside. So those numbers, I could I could go, well, that sounds pretty good. I could buy it for that, but um, I don't like the debt and I'm not sure about the, uh, the penetration of the business with Tesla uh, as the competition. The margins aren't very high again, but I'd need to compare. Now, competitive landscape, this is where I'll give you the link for this in a minute. You can go and compare this stock to others in the same sector and see what their margins, their balance sheets are. Because if their margins are greater and their balance sheet and their cash balance and their debt position is better, then they can crush charge point potentially. So that gives you an indication. Then you can also check the, uh, the PE ratio and decide perhaps uh, that uh, there are other, there are other you know, businesses in the same sector that are more likely to succeed. So I'll give you the link for this, uh, for all these here in a minute. Okay, now then, inside trading. Who's buying and selling on the inside? ChargePoint have sold more shares than they have bought in the last 12 months. They have sold more shares than they have bought. Now, we have to understand that. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad because we've got selling of shares. It depends on the percentage, How? what's the percentage of being sold. If it's a small position of that alloc of the CEO or the CFO or whoever's selling it, it's done for tax purposes regularly. That's not an issue at all. Perfectly healthy. Uh, however, if it's being sold for bad news or extreme, uh, again, you've got to take more, you've got to take all the news into consideration, not just like, you know, Someone's selling, so I'm going to get out. I mean, that's not how it works. Let's look at the most recent. The last transaction was made on September the 21st. So there hasn't been any action since September. That's relatively positive. And that was the general counsel and secretary who sold 23.1 thousand worth of chart point, charge point shares. That's not a huge amount with the shares that are outstanding, is it? Um, so that's not of great concern. But we have had some buy-ins as well. Uh, we've seen uh, September the 13th, September the 20th, 10 million value and 29 million of value as well. So, you know, 
we've we've seen some decent buy-ins as well. Anyway, there's nothing too scary there, I don't think. Uh, anyway, let's move on. Um, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Percentage of shares shorted. The company has 18.91% of shorts. No surprise here. The debt position, uh, the insides trading, not, nothing excessive though. Um, I don't like for the debt. I don't like how low the price has gone. Um, it's heavily shorted. Now we need to be sure about what this means. Anything over 20 is regarded as excessive. Excessive means if we have volume, we're likely to get a short squeeze. Above 20. We're just below 20. But remember, Roaring Kitty situation, GameStop was 100% when GameStop exploded. You're not going to get, you get some liquidations, you get some shorts, shorters give up and have to buy in the stock, but uh, not a whole all out short squeeze of explosion, an explosive price. Not at, not at this level. And certainly with the amount of volume that we've looked at, there's not enough volume either. But uh, getting above 20, like we looked at uh, stock earlier, I think it was the um, the fame stock, whatever, uh, house of fame, the house of fame, whatever it was, uh, hall of fame. There you had 32%. Uh, so with some volume, they can short squeeze. Here, not necessarily. What it means though, if you've got a, this amount of st uh, shorting, it means the there's a lot of negativity around the stock. The stock can continually come down. It's got negative pressure. It's, it's constantly being driven down. Um, so that's not good. Uh, okay. And ChargePoint, that, is, that one's taking a different course. This one is sliding in today's trading session. The move to the downside coming after the company said it's raising $232 million via stock sales. ChargePoint knowing the move aims to support its path to profitability in 2024. So read through the reports here, Julie. What, what analysts are noting is that its amendment to the $300 million in convertible notes issued in April uh, 2022, that is overshadowing that $232 million equity raise this quarter. So RBC, for example, saying the equity raise is going to provide additional comfort that the company has the, the cash liquidity to reach this cash flow uh, break-even target by the end of, of next year. But their point to their clients is the amendment in convertible notes is actually an offset. And that stock, by the way, down about 60% so far in 2023. Right, it's pretty interesting here. So basically what they're doing is, on those convertible notes, they're giving themselves more time, but they're paying higher interest, which seems to indicate relatively no demand, low demand, right? So now the modification, the amendment to those convertible notes is that the notes were due in 2027 and we're paying three and a half, five percent over 5%. Now the spread is seven to eight and a half percent due in 2028. So basically, it's getting more expensive for this company to borrow that money. Effectively, yep. is what's going on amidst tightening financial and conditions. And investors not happy. No, definitely not. If we look at sentiment of the stock, this is where we drag, uh, we discover all the negative, positive news on a company, bring it together to create uh, this sort of pie chart. Over the last 90 days, you can see we have 33% negative news, 36% positive. How has that improved? Well, it's more negative, uh, 31, more neutral news, but less positive news. Uh, last seven days, less again uh, positive news, less again negative, but neutral news. So this isn't telling us a great deal. It's not saying everything's bad or everything's great. It's very neutral. So we're not going to get anything here and even more if we go today, neutral news. So no worsening, but also nothing to celebrate either. All right. Now then, if you're going to invest, you've got to know that um, there are options. You know, what am I going to do with my money? So far, I wouldn't buy this. I'm not looking for cheap. I'm looking for undervalue. I don't necessarily think it's undervalued. I think the debt is a little bit heavy now. Um, the, uh, what we heard, we heard about the convertible notes, their cost of borrowing is more expensive. Um, the competition, I think, Tesla. I need to know more about that, how it integrates with Tesla. But anyway, uh, so far, it's not a buy from me, even though some things look inviting. Uh, on balance, there are better things. So for example, if we look at the S&P, if in 2020, and again, it's not over a long period of time, obviously, if you put $10,000 in the S&P, you would now have $15,000 with hardly any risk, stress or drama. You'd have made some decent money. 
However, if you put $10,000 into uh, ChargePoint, as you can see here, you'd be down to you lost 80% of your money, uh, $1,800. So as you can see, um, ChargePoint is in the red. The S&P is in blue. Now, what we can see here in, in 2020, uh, in 2020, um, we can see the stock rallied. That's a warning sign for me. Let me tell you why. Any stock that did well during COVID when we had the lockdown, March 2020, right, which was about here, all right, that exploded like Peloton, Kavana. Most of those have gone down the toilet since because they had no business going up. People had stimulus checks. People had free money. The world was very different. It was upside down. No one knew what was going on. And people were buying uh, all kinds of things. They were buying Peloton. They were buying Zoom because uh, everybody was at home, uh, you know. And certain stocks got, you know, Tesla went crazy. Obviously, ChargePoint went crazy because it's like, oh, we, let's buy let's buy the EV generation. We've all got this free money. Everyone's on Robinhood. Everyone's buying GameStop and all that kind of stuff. Um and uh, so we had this massive pump and then people think, well, now it's down. It looks cheap. What if COVID hadn't have happened? What if COVID hadn't have happened and we didn't have all those macro conditions? We would be maybe going along here and you wouldn't regard it as cheap anymore. You would just go, it's a steady decline. But because you saw this, it's like, hang on a minute, this is great. Maybe it can go there again. Well, the market doesn't work that way. So there's too many things here which are suggesting to me it's not a buy for me. So there's my review. Charge point. Would I buy charge point? No, I wouldn't buy charge point. I think the best charging network you can own is Tesla. However, if charge point is listening to me, and they would like to put their uh, their point about how they can work with Tesla or compete with Tesla or whatever that might be, I'd like to hear, um, and I might change my mind. But right now, if I'm going to buy a charging network, I might as well buy Tesla because it comes with everything else bundled in for free, if you like. Um, so uh, the balance sheet doesn't look too good. Uh, the debt position doesn't look too good. Uh, the, the, the negative sentiment, nothing really positive. Um, and COVID gave it a push, as did Tesla, by the way. Let's be fair. A lot of companies that are doing well today got a bounce. But there you go. There's my thoughts on ChargePoint. That was done for one of our members, Nikunj. I hope you like it. Click above my head for the... Um, Alpha Spread software and below in the description. Uh, if you are one of my members, you can get the software uh, for free. Uh, you can get a, a premium service uh, which you pay for, which will give you, much, which will basically the discount that you get by being one of my members makes my membership free. So that's really good, right? Um, so and and no one gives that deal. That's the best deal that anyone gives. I insist on that. If anyone partners with me, they don't pay me. I don't get paid to do the reviews. I don't get paid to promote uh, Alpha Spread. I'm just giving it to you because I know it's the best software and I'm giving you the best information. All right? And you can get the best deal as a member of mine. Over here, I'll put the full list of my Alpha Spread reviews. I've reviewed about 35, 40 stocks right now, and I'll continue to do so if my members request. Um, so there we go. There's my thoughts on ChargePoint. It's not a buy for me. Let me know in the comments below. I will reply to everyone's comments and thoughts. And I'd like to, I'd like to find out what you think about ChargePoint. Until then, as always, take care of yourselves and each other.